Okay, today we're talking about welded joint analysis, and specifically we're going to tackle parallel and transverse loads. Parallel and transverse refer to the direction of the applied load with respect to the cross-section uh, that you're analyzing, the cross-section of the weld that's of concern. So there are four tips to keep in mind when you're analyzing the weld in a welded joint. First of all, you assume the stresses, whatever stresses are caused by your applied loads, are going to be uniformly distributed over the smallest cross-section that they could choose, such that it would split the weld in two. So you take a look at the, the weld, and you take a look at what different cross-sections the load could be carried over, all possible cross-sections, and see which one is the smallest that was going to split the, the weld in two. Where could you cut the weld? Where could it fail such that the weld is now in two pieces? What is the smallest cross-sectional area? Guiding principle number one. Number two, we pretend that the stresses in fillet welds are always shear stresses. So normally for a butt weld, you know, if you're applied load, if the surface normal of that smallest cross section that you determined from step one is in the same direction of the applied load, then it's a normal stress. If it's perpendicular to the applied load, then it's a shear stress. But we pretend that the stresses in fillet welds are always going to be shear stresses, regardless of whether the load is actually in the, the direction, is actually parallel to the surface normal that we're considering. Kind of weird, but that's how it is. And then you need to keep these two things in mind for design. You need to keep your normal stresses less than 0.6 times the yield strength, 60% of the yield strength of the weld material, and the shear stresses need to be less than 30% of the ultimate tensile strength of the weld material. So let's apply that with an example. Here's our example. I've got a lot of information on the screen. I'll take you through it. So this is a side view of our part. We've got two pieces of steel that are butted up against each other. And here's a top view of the same thing. Uh, the thickness of the steel is H. And we'll define what H is in a second. It's going to be a quarter inch in both of our problems. And the width of the strip is two inches in both of our problems. Uh, we could have an applied load F that's a kind of tensile load that's pulling this apart like that. We could also have an applied load V, which is pulling up on this side and down on this side, equal and opposite. And we have a welding symbol here that tells us that this here means that we are going to have a square groove in order which uh, to fill, fill with the weld material. So when we're all done, the weld is going to look something like, got it on the top and the bottom. So this refers to the arrow side. So this symbol, whatever goes here, is going to mean that we're going to weld this part. And then the top refers to the other side above the reference line means that we're going to weld from the bottom as well. So these should be relatively roughly equal. And the tail tells us that we're going to be welding with an E6011 welding rod. And here's a chart that tells us a little bit about what, what electrodes uh, mean. So the E stands for electrode. The 70 in this example stands for tensile strength in KSI. The 60 here is the tensile strength in KSI. This is the ultimate tensile strength, not the yield strength. The yield strength is between 0.8 and 0.9 times the ultimate tensile strength. So you can use 0.8 for design purposes, and then if it satisfies your criterion, great. If not, maybe you should take a look at the, the chart and find uh, out exactly what the yield strength is. This one here means the position that you're allowed to weld it in, and it has to do with the viscosity and the stickiness, how fast it cools. Um, if you're welding overhead, then you don't want the molten metal to be dripping down on you or uh, down on the rest of the work. It needs to stay there. So certain welding rods are more appropriate for vertical welding than others. <clears throat> Many of them that we'll use in the shops at Bray are uh, 601 uh, type, so they can be used in any position. But there are some with a 2 in this position here that are only for flat and horizontal use. And then the last digit is for the type of coating and the current that you can use with it. So there's a bunch of different types of coatings with different properties and the types of currents that are acceptable with them. So we're, those don't come up in analysis. These last two digits aren't really important to the analysis. These first two are. So this tells us that we have a approximate 
tensile strength of 60 KSI. And we can look up more specifically what the properties of the 60 series of electrodes are. Actually, 62 KSI tensile strength and the yield strength is around 50. And so 50 is about 0.8 of 62, as I mentioned before. And so the first question is, is this safe? Is this design safe if F is 20 kips and V is zero kips? So we have none of this force here and we have 20 kips on this force. If not, what welding rod should we use? So this is an analysis problem combined with a design problem. So let's start with the analysis portion. Let's apply our principles. Now, first of all, the first one said, stresses are assumed to be uniformly distributed over the smallest cross section. So the weld is occurring in this area. So I'll, I'll draw it as though it were like a perfect weld that's going to... Now, what is the smallest possible cross section that could fit this in two, right? We could cut this um, like at an angle, or we could cut it straight down. And equivalently, you know, it's going to look the same on the top. We could cut it at different angles. The worst case is when we've got, you know, a perfectly straight down vertical here and also vertical on this one. Any other cross section that we choose to cut this thing in two is going to be bigger surface area. So our worst case is simply where the area, the cross sectional area that we're separating is H times W, the width times the, the height. So in our case here, the area that we're concerned with and that we'll be analyzing area is the, the magnitude is H times W. The direction of it is also important. We'll study that in a second, but H is 0 0.25 and W is 2 inches, so that is 0 0.5 inches squared total that we have. Now what's the direction of that? The surface normal of that area that we just created is in this direction, or you know the opposite. It's in this direction in this view. And that is parallel with the F here. So if the direction of the surface normal that we're considering is parallel to the applied load F, then we're going to have a normal stress. That is what it means to have a normal stress because the load is normal to the surface. Okay, so what is our second tip? Well, this is, is this a butt weld or a fillet weld? It is a butt weld, so the bit about fillet weld stresses always being shear stresses is not important to us right now. The, the third tip was that normal stresses should be less than 0 0.6 of the yield strength. So we need to keep, this is our design criterion for safe welds, sigma is less than or equal to 0 0.6 times the yield strength of the material. Now this already includes a safety factor. Actually that's uh, explained right here. So you can also look at table 9.4 in the book. It's the primary source of this information. It says that tension in a butt weld, also simple compression in a butt weld, permissible stress is 0.6 times the yield strength. And it already has a safety factor built in. We don't have to add an additional safety factor. We could, but we don't have to, because the safety factor is that it is already 1.67. So where does this 0.6 come from? How do you get that from the safety factor? Well, if we were designing with our own safety factor, we would say that n times sigma is less than or equal to sy. And we're saying that it's rearranged in this form. Sigma is less than or equal to sy over n. So what does n have to be such that that's satisfied? Well, it's 1 over 0 0.6, and 1 over 0 0.6 is equal to 1.67. Okay, so that's where the 0.6 comes from. It's from applying a safety factor of 1.67. All right, let's find out whether this is satisfied for the joint we're considering here. Let's calculate our stress. Our actual stress, sigma, is equal to the applied load P over the area that we have. I guess this is F in our case. And that's 20,000 pounds divided by 0 0.5 inches squared is 40 KSI. Now, is that less than or equal to 0 0.6 times the yield strength of the material? Well, one way we could figure out what the yield strength is is about 0.8 times this 60 here. 0.8 times 60, because that was the tip that I gave. So it's going to be around 48 KSI. If we want to be more careful and look at the chart, it says that the yield strength for the 60 series of electrodes <clears throat> is 50. So pretty close. 
So 0.6 times, we'll just go ahead and use the 50 here. 0.6 times 50, well, that is 30. And no, so this is not safe. What should we use? So we get to choose our electrode now. We say that whatever our sigma is, let's say that we want it to equal 0.6 times the yield strength. What yield strength do we need? So Sy is equal to sigma divided by 0.6, and our actual stress is 40 KSI divided by 0.6, and it tells us 66.67. So we're gonna need something with a yield strength that's greater than that. So we can look at our chart and we can say, all right, the yield strength doesn't get above, okay, so it looks like the E80 is gonna work and that's just a little bit hair above uh, what our required yield strength is. So yes, we could, use, we could use the E80 series of electrodes. Okay, second problem. Safe, uh, is it safe if F now is going to be 0 kips and V is 15 kips and the same dimensions? If not, what welding rod should we use? All right, with V is equal to 15 kips, let's take a look at whether that's a normal or a shear stress, right? So in this case, the forces V are acting perpendicular to the cross section, the minimum cross section that could split this weld apart into two pieces. It's perpendicular to it, and so we have a shear stress here. So the shear stress, tau, that's averaged over the entire cross section, or it's uniform over the entire cross section, so we assume, is 15,000 pounds divided by 0 0.5, and that's 30, or KSI. And we need to check, is this acceptable? Well, our criterion for shear stresses is that tau has to be less than or equal to 0 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength of the weld material. It says right here, if you have a butt or fillet weld in shear stress, 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength. So let's check, is 30 KSI less than or equal to 0 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength of a 60 KSI welding rod? 62 according to the actual chart here, but we could estimate with 60, we'd get the same answer. This is only 18.6. So no, not safe. What welding rod should we use? Well, we can say, we can just rearrange this. What ultimate tensile strength do we need such that, so we're just gonna divide tau by 0.3. So it's 30 divided by 0 0.3 is equal to 100 ASI. And so it looks like an E10 series of electrodes is going to be, uh, excuse me, E100, I should say, electrode is going to be enough, is going to be 100 KSI.